This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take antique planes and get them back into working condition. Uh, for this week, we're going to do something a little different. Um, I've wanted to do this video for a while. I want to compare all the different products that people use to protect plane irons from rust. Uh, there are people who are real fanatics about some of them. They all have their pros and I guess a few cons. Um, WD-40, 3-in-1, uh, T9, uh, yep, hard-boiled eggs, camellia oil, and paste wax. Um, it's not sure if we can do a real scientific uh, comparison, but hopefully we can have a, a good matchup and by the end come away with uh, maybe a little bit better understanding of which one is best. So first up, WD-40, probably the best known of all of them. Um, it, so what does it say? It says protects against rust on items like tools, sporting equipment, uh, I can't see the other word, oh, firearm. The in one is a motor oil. Uh, it's a very light oil. Um, it's not expressly for removing or protecting from rust, but people swear by it. Um, probably the one that has the biggest fanboys online is, is Bow Shields T9 developed by the Boeing company, um, protects expressly, says it uh, protects uh, items against rust, um, has uh, all sorts of examples on the back. Uh, this is the one that a lot of people really love. Uh, hard boiled egg, there's actually some science behind it. Um, there's sulfur in hard boiled eggs and that sulfur puts a patina on, on iron and that patina can protect against rust. Uh, I've actually done this in the past and I will not, uh, no spoilers, I won't give away what, what the end result is going to be. Next up we have Camellia Oil, uh, also known as Tea Seed Oil, also known as Japanese Knife Oil, also known as uh, uh, Sabuki Oil. Um, it's used for cosmetics, it's used in cooking. I think this was sort of like the old school go-to for a long time for, uh, for protecting um, tools from rust. And then you have the old favorite of paste wax. Um, it was it's designed for to be used on wood, um, but it also can be used on, let's see, uh, metal, leather, plastic, cork, and vinyl. Uh, it's what I use. Um, it doesn't smell good. Uh, it's very petroleum smell, um, but it's cheap. It's like six or seven bucks for a big tin that lasts forever. So yeah, let's. Um, so those are the options, and let's look at the methodology now for how we're going to do this test. So all of them, all the irons are in um, vapor rust. They've been scrubbed. Um, this, I'm going to take a spray bottle, spray off all the uh, extra vapor rust. Um, we'll take, dry each of the irons off really well. Then we'll take a clean fresh rag for each one, put the product onto it, um, take and wipe the iron down really well with each one of them. Uh, and then I will change my gloves and move on to the next one. Um, and then we're gonna try to do something that simulates um, some usage. Um, so I'm going to take this jack plane, which some of you might recognize from an earlier video, um, and I'm going to just try to like do like kind of like normal, you know, how you would touch a plane if you were, you know, messing around with it. Stick it in, in the, um, the, stick it in the plane, um, and repeat this 10 times. Um, there's really no way to act you know, I don't really know if this is the best way of simulating use, but it's the best idea that I came up with. Um, so let me know in the comments if you think there was a better way to do this. Um, so we have uh, six of these. Um, they range from probably mid 1800s 
all the way up to the 19 teens. Um, a couple of them, I don't know who the the maker is. Some of them are, that's a um, an ore plane um, iron, which was a future video. Um, that one's from Germany. Um, some of them are not marked. Some of them are, the mark is obscured. Um, but they all have um, similar amounts of rust on them. They're all in a similar state. Uh, and so off they go to the vapor rust. Um, that ore plane iron, uh, eventually you'll see, has uh, too much rust on it and is very deteriorated and is in poor condition. And so here in a little while, you'll see me swap that out for, for something different. So I want to nerd out a little bit on um, plain irons and how they're made. We don't need to get, you know, super in depth. I don't want to, we don't need to talk about, you know, steel grain and structure. Um, but I think it's interesting um, uh, about how these guys or how these things were made um, back in the 1800s, um, 1700s. It wasn't until people have been forging steel since, you know, for thousands of years, um, but it wasn't until the mid 1700s that someone uh, invented um, cast steel. Um, and it had very few impurities in it, and then it had a very uh, specific range of, um, of carbon in it. And it was perfect for edge tools. It was perfect for keeping a sharp edge. So it was malleable enough to sharpen, but at the same time was hard enough that it could maintain um, an edge on it. Um, and at first it was really expensive. Um, and so what you'd see is uh, tool manufacturers would, um, would, f would take a blank of like wrought iron and then forge weld the uh, piece of, of cast steel to the end, um, to, you know, the part of the iron where you sharpened it. Um, and so you can see like the one that I have right here, there's actually discoloration um, at, down towards the tip, and that's the cast steel part, and the rest of it is a different kind of metal. Um, and so by the 1800s, production methods had changed, and it was a lot cheaper, cast steel was a lot cheaper, and so entire irons were made of cast steel. But um, you can see why um, toolmakers would stamp that you know their their tools with warranted cast steel. I mean, it was. It was an advertisement saying, you know, this is guaranteed to be, you know, the best materials that are out, uh, you know, the best steel that's available out there. Um, so yeah, this is that uh, that ore plane, um, and you can just see some of the cracking in there, and the like, yeah, the whole thing's just coming apart. So what I did was I swapped it out here. Here's another one you can see. It's called a laminated blade um, with a cast steel down at the tip. And even though you know some of these are made up of two different kinds of metal, I really don't think it changes the experiment that we're doing. You know, the, we're coating, we're finding a substance that can coat and adhere to a piece of metal and protect it from oxygen and water, and that is should be true regardless of the type of metal. Um, if these products are going to be, if we should, if we're going to judge them as being successful. So yeah, here we go. First up, uh, WD-40.
So yes, for reals, hard boiled eggs. Um, so eggs have um, proteins in them and the proteins have sulfur in them. And as you heat up the egg and it begins to cook um, up above like 140, 150 degrees, the, uh, those sulfur molecules get released. Um, and that's why if you overcook hard boiled eggs, they smell stinky. Um, but that sulfur can um, leave a patina on metal and metal workers and jewelers uh, know that and use that for their work. Um, when I heard about that, I thought, oh, I uh, wonder what that would do to a plain iron. Now, supposedly you can just take like a crushed hard boiled egg and stick it in a plastic bag with some metal and get the same kind of patina on it. I didn't, when I tried that, it didn't work at all. Um, so instead, I tried smearing it with the yolk itself. Um, you know, I mean, this is an interesting method. You know, we'll see how it works out. Um, it's if you like smearing food on your tools. Um, it might be an option for you. Uh, in terms of cheapness, though, man, it's like if you can't afford the six, seven bucks for some paste wax or WD-40, uh, you can't beat the price. Um, what I did with this, it's a little different than the others, is that I let the yolk dry and then came back and scrubbed it off and then, then did the rub down. So yeah, now the um, simulated usage. Um, for the three-in-one iron, it was a little bit wider than the, some of the others and didn't fit in this plane, so I stuck it in a, I uh, used a triplane instead that I had. It was my great, great, great grandfather's triplane. Made sometime before the, right around the beginning of the Civil War in the US. So here they are after 24 hours. Um, they are all entirely rust free. I decided to put them outside overnight um, to um, sort of put them to an extreme test uh, and put them on a, a covered porch. Uh, I live in a Mediterranean climate, um, San Francisco Bay Area, right up next to the bay. Um, so we don't have all the same kind of you know, heavy humidity that you would get on the East Coast. Um, they all performed uh, excellently, um, even the egg, um, no, no tiny bits of rust or anything on any of them, um, which I think is, is pretty remarkable, um, even in a low moisture environment. Um, um, in, in my mind, I mean, I think that sort of shows who the, the winner is and, and that's all of them. Um, 
which was kind of my what I suspected would be uh, the case uh, when I first started. I didn't really think one of these was going to show itself to be that much more exceptional than the other. Um, and sure enough, after 24 hours, um, we've got some, I think, some pretty, pretty solid results. Uh, but if 24 hours didn't get any rust, what about 48 hours? Still no rust with 48 hours. Uh, 72 hours is where we start to see some little specks of rust. Um, WD-40, 3-in-1, T9, um, all show a little bit of rust, as does the paste wax. Three and one had nothing on the front, but underneath where moisture is gonna collect, um, have a little speck up there, and then a little bit down by the bevel. T9, T9 actually showed surprisingly the most amount of rust. Again, underneath, or I'm sure moisture um, or air didn't get a lot of movement. Um, showed a lot up there. But the rest of it looked fine. Uh, the egg showed absolutely no rust at all. Um, when I tried using egg, uh, I didn't get rust showing up until about six months later. I started getting little speckles of rust all over the entire. Um, I used it on a on a metal plane body. Camellia oil, the old standard, was just the was the only other one that had no rust at all. Then paste wax had a little bit up by the maker stamp. I think where I just didn't get enough in. Um, so what do you think? Uh, in your mind, does this make um, eggs and camellia oil the best, um, or is having some tiny specks of rust just to be expected after being leaving something outside for for three whole days or three whole nights? Um, honestly, I think they're all they're all equally good. Um, I don't think these little little bits of rust really put one ahead or behind another. Um, I think they all are very exceptional at what they do, um, even, even hard-boiled eggs. Um, if you like this stuff and you're interested more in uh, plane blades, totally check out Traditional Wooden Hand Planes by Scott Wynn. Um, really just an awesome book overall in terms of learning about planes, but it's got a ton of information about um, plane irons and metal and what metal is made of and all sorts of stuff. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of all this. Let me know what you think is the winner and is the loser. Let me know how, what you think of how I conducted the experiment. Um, let me know what you use and what you're going to continue to use or not use after watching this. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.